Welcome back to another episode of this uh, is Blanche, a shopkeeper. So, hey there, we have quality goods at honest prices. What is a not honest price? Hmm? Like, an honest price is some... Yeah, well, uh, if you don't have an honest price, then that means your price is lied. Or you're lying. If you're the price is lying, or you lie with the price, whatever. Uh, so what is a price you lie with? That means uh, that somehow it's either more expensive or, or cheaper, right? So the price is not the one uh, that you would probably be paying for it, right? The incorrect price. Uh, yeah. So an honest price means it's a price that accounts for all of the cost that happens uh, in, 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 in uh, the chain of production, right? Uh, so, let's say you pollute the environment, uh, and that means that other people have to pay in order to clean this up, right? Or you, your own company, pays for uh, cleaning up services like that. And this extra cost is then put onto the, uh, the good, and uh, this basically means you internalize... Uh, yeah, some uh, some costs, some external costs uh, on the product, which is actually a good thing. But most companies try to get their products as cheap as possible or sell them as cheap as possible. Therefore, they don't want to account for external costs like that, like pollution. They want to be or they want to produce uh, their products in a country that does not have any laws uh, that account for uh, pollution so they cannot be held accountable uh, for that pollution, so they can just do it uh, and then have lower prices when it comes to production. But actually, what happens is that other people have to pay the price uh, for this, and this is, if you think about it, maybe problematic. Uh, because you can say that it's unfair, but fairness is just meh. In this case, uh, yeah. Who does the pollution? Uh, and in this case, uh, the one who does the polluting should also be the one who does the cleaning up, right? Or at least be held accountable for the cleanup. <laughs> Same thing, right? Like, if you break things, are you the one who is going to fix it? Yes or no? Who is the one who is supposed to be held accountable? Or it not just supposed to be, but who do you want to be held accountable? That's the better question. So it's not about the question of what is correct, but more a question of how do you want things to be? Oh. Now, uh, I'd like to ask about something. I'm listening. What makes uh, Monster General Goods special? Uh, our shop may be small, but we do have a warehouse in Li Yu Harbor. We take pride in having the largest catalog of items and the fastest shipping in all of Monster. That's great. So you're basically Amazon. Hey there, we have quality goods at honest prices. Except for the honest prices, maybe, but okay. Um, because if you say, like, um, free shipping, for example, that would infer uh, that you don't pay your shipping personnel, right? <laughs> because otherwise, why would it be free if you don't pay them? So, huh? Same thing. Uh... Somehow questionable. No. Um, what do you... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Was there an... There we go. Uh, this was uh, the Monster General Goods question. And what is Mondstadt known for? The wind and the happy people. Uh, Mozart is a city known for its wa uh, wines. Yeah. No, winds. Didn't say wine, didn't I? Anyway, taverns are where you'd want to go. Most dwellers here go to one of the taverns for a drink after a hard day's work. You can meet all sorts of people in the tavern at night. And this is why this town is not that, let's call it wealthy. Because if most people are just uh, working on the farm, uh, trying to grow food or making food, whatnot, uh, then they don't make any other objects. So the overall wealth or diversity uh, in available objects goes down because there's only food available to buy, right? 
So basically that means uh, if everybody just grows food, then no one can make a chair. But we do see a chair, so there's probably someone who does that, but yeah. That's what I mean. You just see food. Piles and piles and piles of food. But you don't see other objects. So Blanche, uh, let's see what she has when it comes to buying things. Uh, okay, so these are, uh, yeah, sold at General Goods Shop. And she is General Goods Shop. So we get pepper, we got onion, we got milk. We got some tomatoes, uh, some cabbages, some potatoes, and some wheat. Great. All right. Uh, let's talk to a another one, uh, which is Timaeus. Timaeus. Tim. Timothy. Did I? <coughs> yeah, I was uh, talking to her, and then there's the crafting kit, and then there's the jewelry <coughs> shop. So. Let's talk to him first, uh, but before we do the crafting, uh, we talk to uh, Tim Timaeus. Timaeus, uh, hi there. Are you also interested in alchemy? Ooh. <sighs> His workshop might be the most interesting one. Um, who are you? I am Timaeus, an alchemy scholar. You may not have heard my name before, uh, but I bet you have heard the names Albedo and Sucros before. Yes, because I was on the uh, website of this game, and these are two characters you can have in your squad, I believe. Albedo is nothing short of a genius in the field of alchemy, and his assistant Sucros is extremely talented for her age. Like, I... Either this, or you can... Or they're just there in the game. Hmm. Because there are some characters that you can't play with yet. At least. I may mix them up, whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm a total amateur compared to them. So, about Albert Albedo. Albedo is an alchemy prodigy. A lot of people call him the Crider Prince. He's the top alchemical talent and monster. And they say he's an outlander who just showed up in Monster one day and was instantly taken as a chief alchemist by the Knights of Favonius. He's also captain of the investigation team. His alchemical theory is refreshingly unbridled in comparison to conventional theories. In practical, in practice, it all works out too. In his eyes, my work must seem like a child's play. But that means you can just learn from him, isn't it? So, who are you? Da, 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 da. Something about Sucros. Sucros is Albedo's only assistant. She's so lucky to have gained Albedo's apprentice uh, appreciation. As a born and bred child of Mozart, we should all be proud of Sucros's contribution to alchemy. But her research and interests are a little antiquated, uh, to the point that they rarely render any practical application. What do you mean by antiquated? If I access to such a plethora of resources, if I access to, if I get access, to, whatever, uh, who knows what I could accomplish? There's a get missing. If I get access to, ah, <sighs> right. So, to Myers, uh, alchemy. Tell me more about that. Uh, it is a craft that has been passed down since ancient times, but it is barely understood in the present. Its mechanisms are magical and mysterious, completely unlike the principles that shape our understanding of the physical world. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, things that happen, uh, and we still don't know why they happen. We just figured out a fairly reasonable uh, underlying structure. But you can still ask many, many, many more questions. Like, how does this force interact with this other force? And where is it coming from? Where is it going? Why is it there in the first place? And whatnot. Um, yeah. There's still many, many more questions. If I can get the hang of it, I should be able to create some pretty awesome stuff and contribute to our knowledge of ancient civilization. Ooh, how's your research coming along? Not too bad. Although I haven't had the best of luck recently, my clock is a few minutes too slow. And thanks to that, a whole load of experiments have failed this May. It's not much use for keeping time anymore, that's for sure. So now I get a clock or what. But after being used in so many alchemical experiments, 
It seems to have gained some understanding of the basic makeup and functional principles of the world. Maybe it's undergone some sort of miraculous transformation. Uh, why don't you take it? Maybe it'll come in handy in your adventures. So, what kind of clock is this? Uh, the scholar's clock. Ooh! A desktop clock. So, it's not something that you're supposed to wear. Hi there. Uh, still alchemy. Yada, 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 yada. Sounds complicated. It's not that bad. The procedure is actually very simple. If you're interested, I can show you the world. Uh, much as one. Uh, who uses a wind glider needs not to understand how it was built in order to glide. Yep. And this is something that uh, today's society kind of like miss... misses, right? We don't need to know how things are made, we just have to use them in the correct fashion, or like in a productive manner, right? Or in a way that we find useful. And if we want to make the gliders, then we should probably know how they work. But if someone uses a glider, then this un uh, additional information might be just a bit too uh, unnecessary for them. They are just doing the gliding. You don't need to, like, withhold this information, uh, but you don't need to bombard them with it. The process is mesmerizing to witness. I'm confident you'll be singing the praises of ancient civilizations and their ingenuity after you've tried it for yourself. All right. Uh, okay, good. I think I got everything. Uh, now I can craft. I don't craft with him, like with the um, with the merchants and whatnot. Uh, I just utilize the crafting table. Earth and water, wind and fire. Craft for me what I desire. Chopping essential oil. <laughs> this is why you, why essential oils are good. You can. <laughs> Witchcraft. Um, what is it good for? What does it do? Uh, it's a potion. Uh -huh. Increases all party members' animal damage by 25% for 300 seconds. So, um, this is good if you already have a high amount of animal damage. Because then it can increase it by a certain percentage. And if the base value is not high enough, then the increase from the percentage itself is actually negligible. Um, let's say you deal 100 damage, then uh, the outcome uh, in terms of damage would be 125. But if you just deal, let's say, 10 damage, uh, then the increase would be just 2.5 damage. So you end up at 12.5 damage. So the actual thing you need to increase in order to boost your damage uh, would be the base amount and not the percentage. So... Uh, this is more like a uh, high-end uh, item, uh, not really suitable uh, for the early game. Now, uh, this is probably the same, uh, but the same uh, in terms of cryo damage. Then we also have that, whatever that is, insulation potion. Increases all party member electro resistance uh, by 25%. So, uh, the damage is the pointy thing, and the resistance is the uh, slightly bigger potion that's also said to be insulated. So... Uh, shimmering Nectar, a character and weapon enhancement material, and it does what? Uh, the Nectar does fully da 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 da. Alright, so this is just there to boost your materials. I can craft them. Um, so I can turn a Divining Scroll, or like three of them, into one unit of these. Uh, so I can turn three level or like one star items into one two star item. So it's a three to one exchange. Same goes for the pointy ends, same goes for the nectar. Uh, the stained masks, I have found a few of, but not too many, because the drop rate is not that high. Mm, one. Uh, I have three, two, one exchange. Uh, also the slime secretion. Oh. Still, uh, I think I've actually defeated a lot of slimes, but the secretions don't drop that often. So, what is the uh, Fate's Yearning Essential Oil? Uh, this boosts what? This is a quest item. Same goes for the Valley Weather. Uh, essence of Decode Silk Flower. It can be further refined into perfume. It gives of an intense scent. What is this? Uh, it's also there. Uh, all of this uh, is supposedly be there for a perfume quest. The Unmoving Essential Oil. Could be Earth. Um... I don't know. It looks like Earth. Geo damage. Yeah. 
So this is geo damage. This is what it, you see the uh, little sign there too. This kind of tells you already what kind of energy is there. Also, you have the little symbol on top. Um, like the droplet is water. In this case, it's a water droplet and not this water symbol, which makes it a little more complicated to distinguish the thing that you need. And this one here is a triangle, but the triangle is not the symbol for Earth. It's more like the uh, rectangular thingy. Uh, Dustproof potion. Okay, this is like an Earth shield, wind shield, frost shield, water shield, a fire shield. And interestingly enough, you need a butterfly for most of them. Uh, yeah, either a butterfly or some of these shield thingy, the crystal core. The crystal cores or butterflies. These are defensive uh, items. A frog is offensive. Uh, yeah, frogs are offensive stuff. Then we have a sturdy bone shard. What is this? A uh, fragment of a da -da -da -da. Uh, character level up material. Okay. So again, a three to one exchange. Same goes for the slime concentrate, by the way. There's a slime secretion and a slime concentrate. And then I also found like another slime secretion. Uh, oh, oh, this is how it's done. Um, you have a slime condensate that turns into a slime secretion. Uh, and this turns into uh, a slime concen... Wait. Slime concentrate. Oh, condensate. This is right. So condensate secretion concentrate the two names are basically a little bit too close together so you could mix them up by accident mm, treasure hoarder insignia a uh, science uh signet, whatever that probably presents its owner's position as member of the treasure hoarders <laughs> the pursuit of treasure knows no bounds but that is being a thief something to be proud of um well, just hoarding treasure that does not ne necessarily mean that you are a thief. But if you think about it, if you have stuff piled up, right, that you don't use and just have, or basically your use case for these objects are in uh, amassing them, then uh, that means other people are not using them, right? Um, and in this case, you rob them of their use of the product. So. What is this? A in Agnes Agri gemstone. Uh, this might be a pyro uh, ascension crystal. And this is an Agni. Maybe you need. Wait, this is a four star? This is a five star. So, depending on. Yeah, the uh, adventurer rank. Uh huh. It's a certain adventurer rank. You need a certain uh, gemstone to ascend. And depending on what kind of element your character has, uh, they're different ones. So. And recipe unlocked at adventure rank 30. Like, what is this? It ah, so there's ascension materials and there are talent materials. The books in this case, again, a three to one exchange. So this game uh, has a three to one exchange for everything. Um, and because not just your character can ascend, but also your weapons can, uh, there are also other items to do the improvement. Now, um, of course, there are also certain uh, ranks for these. I will not go through all of them, uh, but what is this? Character and weapon enhancement material. Again, we have stuff like that, uh, but they are... They look like level... Yeah, all of them are level 4, except for that. No, this is also level 4. No, this is level 3, but what is this? Uh, weapon ascension. Then you have crafting again. Okay, at least you could sort it by just clicking down here. Makes it much, much easier. And this is a level 2 upgrade. Can be used at level 15, but I'm not there yet. Good to know. Now, one thing to do next is uh, talking to the jeweler, uh, the Marjorie, the owner with wind comes glory. So, welcome. Every treasure here is unique, so we don't negotiate on the price, nor do we give refunds. Uh, I'd like to ask about something. Uh, yeah, have you seen anything interesting? How did you come to own this shop? Well, she probably just bought it. Why did I open this shop, you ask? Uh, it's because of my dad. Mm, he's the master of the Adventures Guild, Mozart Branch. He always brings tons of treasures after each adventure. Uh, he'll then tell me the story behind each of the treasures. He was my hero when I was little. I wanted to share those stories with everyone, so I opened this shop. 
But not long after opening, my dad became a bit more dirty and talks to himself all day. Oh, Same as uh, me. Kind of. <laughs> um, yeah. But why is he talking uh, to himself if... Hmm. Maybe because she was not listening. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. Like, his, her dad was just talking anyway. So... Either it doesn't matter if she was there or not, he was talking anyway. So if she was there, he was talking to her, or at least she felt that. Uh, and if not, he uh, has to still kind of tell the story or whatever. Now, um, did I hear you talk about Wolvendom? Oh yes, I did see something strange in Wolvendom not long ago. From the silhouette, it seems to have been a boy, but he was with a pack of wolves and they seemed very close too. Perhaps I was mistaken. I was quite a distance away after all, and it was only a glimpse. I mean, how could humans live alongside wolves? How strange. Well, anything is possible, right? So, browse items. Uh, my, this is unfortunate. Uh, the shop's been undergoing renovations recently. Drop by next time. Our products will never disappoint. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. And then there's another one. Uh, Catherine. A this receptionist uh, of the adventurer skill. Astra Odis Sosque. Welcome to the Adventure Skill. So, who are you? I'm Catherine, the receptionist here at the Adventure Guild. It's my job to assign quests to Monstart's adventurers and provide intelligence support. The Adventure Guild is open for business all year round. What does the Adventure Guild do? Except for adventure. The Adventures Guild is an organization that was set up to support all of Tevat's adventures all across the seven nations. Uh, we provide a platform to help newcomers adjust to the adventures lifestyle while also supporting veteran adventurers and allowing them to adventure more freely. The guild uh, collates all the complex word of mouth information it receives and redistributes it in the form of quests and adventures assigned to adventures. All right. So basically, management of problem solving. Mm. Uh, wait a minute, was there? No, there's no other choice there. And let's get uh, claim adventurers rank rewards. Oh, there are rewards. Let's do that. Uh, okay, so every time you level up your adventure rank, uh, you can claim all the rewards. In this case, there are three rewards. Uh, the money, the stones, and the character upgrades. Next is the same... wait a minute. The nice thing is you can actually go back and forth between the stats there. But these two are the same for some reason. Uh, the next is some primal gems, uh, some food, but no money. There's money again, some other upgrades of the uh, Acquaint Fate. Nice. And most... okay, so it is different. Sometimes you get primal gems, sometimes you get food, uh, and sometimes uh, you get money. And sometimes you get all of that. Uh, yeah, currency and upgrade thing. Next one is currency and food. And uh, level 7 is not there yet. But this is an item that you can actually get here. It's nice, but getting items for adventurer's rank makes kind of no sense. Unlocks at required event. Hmm. So I'm not able to... Ooh. I can see until level 11. Maybe it loads so and so many levels after the current one, like five. Yeah. One, two, three, four, yeah. five after six. And with the next level up, I will probably be able to see until level 12. So I'm not able to see too far. Ooh. Too far. The physical damage increases by, yeah, 7.5%. Nice. But only good if the base damage is already high enough. But at least this is a sword. Good for the main character. Uh, normal hit or charge attacks increase attack and defense values by 4% for 6 seconds. Max force stacks. This effect can only occur once every 0.3 seconds. Be what? What do they mean by 0.3 seconds? So you cannot immediately charge it up faster than this. Like, a stack can only happen... Or is the stack the, the thing that occurs here? Or is it the damage boost? No, the damage boost stays there for 6 seconds. But the stack can only happen every 0.3 seconds, so you can't just immediately boost to 4 stacks. You need to take some time with it. Now, uh, we got a flower and whatnot. Okay. 
So, that means uh, the, yeah, we probably got all of the interesting people here uh, in the lower portion of the town. Uh, like all of these, all of the interesting ones are already marked. So this adventure skill, we got a jeweler, which hasn't opened yet. Uh, we got a tavern and we get other stuff in here. This should actually be marked, but it's not. Then we got uh, another tavern. Uh, the smithy and the upper portions of Mondstadt I will explore next time. Aha. Uh, so, we end it with a nice view of the fountain and continue with another one at another time. Until then, like and subscribe. Ta-ta.